I want to do just a couple of examples, and then I want to mention one more point. One of the things you'll be asked to do on the assessment is to distinct and the homework and classwork is to distinguish between an analogy and an argument by analogy. Now, I, I did I mentioned this at the beginning of the PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, at the beginning of the lecture, uh, an analogy just states a comparison, and an argument by analogy draws a conclusion from it. So let's consider a couple examples based on that. And remember, you're going to see answers on the assessment that say, here's a passage, argument or argument by analogy. And you're going to have to know which one it is to get the right answer, obviously. So what if I just said, working in this office is like driving around Florida without AC? Working in this office is like driving around Florida without AC. Not an argument. It's just one claim, and it's making a comparison. It's just saying, working in this office is like this. X is like Y. It's just the first premise of an argument. It's not a full argument, because it doesn't draw a conclusion. But what if I said this? She's no good at tennis. There's no way she's good at racquetball. She's no good at tennis. There's no way she's good at racquetball. That is an argument, because they draw the experience of one person and they connect it to the experience in another domain, right? So they draw a conclusion. Given that she's no good at tennis, we can modify. Given that she's no good at tennis, it follows that there's no way she's good at racquetball. Premise, conclusion, argument by analogy. However, there is another unstated premise here, which again, you guys should know how to recognize at this point, or you should at least be aware that that's a possibility sometimes. And that is that Tennis and racquetball are both sports that uh, use a racket, you know, of some kind. And that's basically the idea. They're similar sports. Tennis and racquetball are both sports that involve hitting a, some sort of a thing with a racket. It's not like we're comparing tennis to bowling, right? So the unstated premise would just be the connection between tennis and racquetball. And then to logically lay it out, we'd say, well, she's no good at tennis, so she's probably not good at racquetball either. Analogy is implied but unstated, um, but, the, but it is an argument because it does have a premise and a conclusion, and it draws a conclusion from a comparison. So argument by analogy. How about this one? This is a famous um, one from Karl Marx. The great communist thinker said, religion is the opium of the people. Religion is the opening, opium of the people. Not an argument, just a claim. It does. It, all it does is say, religion is like a drug, basically. It doesn't draw a conclusion from it. It's just a statement. However, we could just to show you, we could turn an analogy into an argument by adding something, couldn't we? If I added a premise and conclusion, I could say, so religion is the opium of the people. Drugs make people unaware of reality. Thus, religion also makes people unaware of reality. Not saying it's a good argument or true, but that's how we could make it an argument, right? We'd add an additional premise that ties it together logically. But just to be clear, just stating religion is the opium of the people and that's it, that's just an analogy. There's no argument. Okay, something else that you might be asked to, not you might, you will be asked to do on the assessments is to look at two different arguments by analogy and determine which one is the stronger one. So it's hard to evaluate the overall strength of an argument by analogy because there's some subjectivity in what we determine to be strong or weak. But in comparison to other arguments, we can clearly evaluate which is stronger. And there's a very objective answers here. So for instance, consider these two arguments and tell me which one is a better, stronger argument by analogy. Which one, in which one, is the conclusion more likely to be true based on the premises presented? So let's say I have Doug Gray is a successful businessman. He therefore would make a fine mayor. Doug Gray is a successful businessman. He would make a fine mayor. Now compare that to Doug Gray is a successful academic researcher. He would make a fine mayor. Doug Gray is a successful academic researcher. He would make a fine mayor. So I hope you can see that the first one is much stronger. And this is because the duties that one has as a politician, like a mayor, are much more closely related to a businessman's duties than an academic researcher's duties. An academic researcher is somebody who spends a lot of time in a lab in front of a computer. Sometimes they have a reputation for being antisocial. Um, 
they don't they they especially when they're researching they don't talk to many people they're just running experiments and r drawing up the results those aren't behaviors that are going to help you as a mayor you're a mayor you need to speak well you need to be eloquent you need to understand business dealings and numbers and things like that um, I mean there's some relationship between a researcher and being a mayor but being a businessman would clearly have qualify you more for doing that right for, so for just for take one example if you're a businessman you got to know how to talk to people and work with them right otherwise you wouldn't be successful uh, and it says successful right so if Doug Gray is a successful businessman it means he's had success working with people and building relationships that's much more likely going to help him in the job as mayor than an academic researcher right? so that's a case where um, the first one would be stronger. Now I want to give you one word of caution because sometimes students instead of answering the question as it's asked which is which is stronger given these two arguments they answer the question which is the best argument overall that's not what's being asked right where you're not sometimes students say well they're both really weak arguments does not matter I'm not asking you about the overall strength and weakness I'm asking you about the strength and weakness in relation to the other one and so Remember that on the assessment.